How is the Sigillium Dei used in rituals? The Sigillium Dei meth was around for at least a few generations prior to John Dee's getting his hands on it. But it is clear that Dee advanced its usefulness the most of all its students. His placement of the various archangel names encoded throughout, the circle around it, the seven-pointed heptagram, and the five-point pentagram within it, is a masterpiece of his extraordinary genius on par with the later Mozart. 1756 to 1791, and if one were to apply the three sets of seven letters each of D's Enochian alphabet to three octaves of notes, one may be able even further to turn D's composition into an actual song, albeit perhaps more like a fugue by Bach, 1685 to 1750, than Mozart's Requiem. On paper, Dee's version of the Sigillium Dei in Meth is a work of savant-level artistry. However, in Dee's practice of Enochian magic rituals, the Sigillium seems to have played a small and almost insignificant role. Before commencing a scrying session to discourse with his imagined angels, Dee and Kelly would set the table and prepare the working space. This involved laying out the cloth covered depicting the holy table upon which were spread out the ensigns of creation around Dee's crystal ball positioned in the tabletop's center. <clears throat> Under each of the four feet of the table were placed a Sigillium Dei meth imprinted onto a wheel of bees' wax. This was understood to purify the table of the working by placing it above the floor of the working space. It was also believed to protect the practitioners from the forces being summoned into activity via the table and its ornaments. So, in effect, the Sigillium Dei meth ended up being in the lowest position of Dee's working tools, acting as electrically resistant earthquake putty to buffer the knocks and taps of the spirits with whom he spoke. <clears throat> 